something about that, if you don't mind. Serious, uh-huh. So, oh, okay. it is it is perfectly feasible. Oops, it's still on. It is perfectly feasible to make active good biogas systems out of small tanks, just put together in series or parallel, uh, because you just have many small tanks equaling among one big tank, and each of these is about a hundred liters. What you really need to produce for a family of four enough gas is you need about between 500 and 1,000 liters. So one, two, three, four, five tanks, just this, would give you about a half an hour of cooking gas every day uh, if you fed them actively. To pipe them together, the only problem, as we come in here, is the expense of the tank fittings. And this bulkhead fitting here, which then clamps between the tanks, you can put the feeding pipes on, these cost about 40 euro. So if you had to spend five times 40 euro for five tanks, that 200 euro would kill you. However, the same size fitting, two inch fitting, from Zahran Industries in Cairo, Magdi Zahran is the inventor and he's a friend of ours, his factory pumps these out for about $5. So then you're only spending 25 bucks to connect all these tanks together. And then his smaller ones, he has them in one inch and half inch, they're only about 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, even though here in Europe, one this big would cost 20 dollars or 20 euro, and one a half inch costs 10 euro. These cost between 50 cents and two dollars. And that's the whole secret, is having inexpensive bulkhead fittings, which are really just a locking nut on a threaded pipe with a rubber washer. And so you can build your own out of any pipes. You just have to have the locking nut if you shipped these to people for next to nothing, they could use their own pipes and then give them rubber to cut out their, their rings. So that this is really all people need in various sizes, mm-hmm. the half inch, the three quarter inch, the one inch, and the two inch. Why they can charge 40 euro for this, I mean, it's not like we're building nuclear power plants. It doesn't have to be... <laughs> You know, made in a, in a way that never falls apart. So basically, a kit, the basic kit would be you have the, the um, what did I say this was called? The, um, the ring, and you have the, uh, the, the, the washer, and then you use any pipe. It could be a steel pipe, plastic pipe, anything. But it is much easier if you have the whole thing, and for about 2 or $3, it's not bad. So that's what we would do is provide people with these types of fittings and then go go get all the old tanks you've got and just the cheap pipes and tubes and just hook them together and you're pretty much done. So that's for the biogas. In terms of the solar, we make our own solar panels now. This one here is just two plates of plexiglass with some silicone grease and the solar cells themselves, each one of these produces half a volt at about uh, 1.8 or almost 2 amps. So what you've got here is you've got 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts, 4 volts on this panel, but the 4 volts are, with these 8, are about 16 amps, 4 times 16. So this is about a, it's, um, this can be as as much as a 20 watt panel. This one is a 30 watt panel. And you can see we just solder them together on the back. And then we've made little ones like this. And when I carry these out in the field, I've taken these to Nepal with me because they don't break because it's plexiglass. When I put them all together in the sun and wire them together, I have here about um, 20, 40, 60, almost 80 watts of a panel. So it's equivalent to one big panel. But I can carry them... These I actually carried in a backpack Mm -hmm. throughout Nepal. And so you make your own whatever size you want. This one I made with gaps in it so that it could be used as a window and still let light through, Mm. building integrated photovoltaic. But you have the option. The cells themselves come in a box. They come in this box here. 
which you can carry. And this carried about 100 watts worth of solar cells that I had in my backpack, and I took it up to Nepal, and then you can solder them in place. So rather than carrying a bulky panel to Brazil, to the favela, carrying it up the mountain, carrying it to the village, you simply carry a box of cells, a soldering iron. It can be a butane-powered soldering iron if there's no electricity. And then you make this panel where you are, and it turns out to be a lot cheaper. Now, they do break. They're very, very fragile, but you can still use the broken pieces. So, if you can get them cut properly, you can use half cells and make a whole panel like I'm doing here out of half cells. You just get half the current. If they really break, you can solder them together and make mini solar panels. It's a little more difficult because they don't have the right place to do the soldering, but you can. You can even tape them, like I've used scotch tape to tape this lead on back here. So it's really nice to be able to make your own solar panel, and when they do break, you can cut them with a, which I think I have here somewhere, with a glass cutter. Here it is. It turns out, and let me give you an example of this. So if I come over here and I say, well, this panel, this is broken and taping it does not work in this case. You can't tape it together like this. Even though it looks right, the electrons can't get from one side to the other. So I tried this and it didn't work. So I'm going to cut it. So what I would do is I would say to myself, all right, I want to cut the piece that still has the tab wire on it. So I basically... <clears throat> a ruler, take my glass cutter, should work, there we go, so I've cut the piece that works. Mm -hmm. And then this piece will also work. So even though they're really fragile, the fact that you can cut them yourself with a simple glass cutter is how I've got these pieces to all be the same size. And then I'm putting them together in a piece of plexiglass. And it's really, really simple. The, the, way, that solar, the way that solar cells work is... You want pieces that are always the same size. So this is, let's say, the same size here. And this one's the same size. So let me uh, turn this around and let me cut this piece here again. Let's see if that comes apart. There we go. Okay, so I've got these solar pieces. And then what you do is you take the top, which is negative, always the blue part is negative, the bottom is positive, and you go half a volt negative to the back of this. So it's, oh, that broke, that happens. So you go negative, positive, and then you put the next one, so that's negative going to positive, and this has a wire here in the negative, which it goes to the positive of this one, and you just wire them from negative to positive to negative to positive. So you get half a volt, one volt, 1.5 volts, two volts, and you just increase the voltage through this wiring. Mm. And that's how you make a solar panel. Mm. And it really is that simple. I mean, people make such a mystery out of it. Even tiny pieces will produce voltage. And do I have a voltmeter around here? I don't have one to show you, but maybe I can find one. You can stop the tape for a second. I'll find my voltmeter. Where are you, voltmeter? There it is. Okay. I'll keep it going. Either way. So, if you would do me the favor of yeah. hold the panel. Mm -hmm. Like this? Yep. Up as close to the light as you can. I take this, the negative lead. I'm going to hold this in that hand if you don't mind. The negative lead will go on the top, the positive lead on the bottom. One second. 
You see it now it says 0.34. Wait a minute, let me touch it again. Point it toward the light. 0 0.20, 0 0.32. Angle it like that. Yep. And even though this is a broken piece, notice it just went to 0.39. The most you'll get out of it is 0.5 in full sunlight, half a volt. So really, even broken pieces produce the voltage. It's a miracle of nature that the way that light hits, the photons hit this and they knock electrons out. It doesn't matter how small the piece is. <laughs> so let me, yeah, let's just take this little piece here. Oops. Hold that up to the light. It's a tiny piece. Put that there and that there, and what are we seeing? Is it is it rising? Point through. Oops! I just smashed it. <laughs> oh, let's try another piece. <laughs> this glass-like material. Look here. Here's a smoke point. Yeah. Okay. That one there. That's good. I can hold it on the edge. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's so fragile. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Okay. And what do we get? 0 0.35, 0 0.39, right? Is that what you're saying? 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. It's not directly to the light. Right. No, no, it's better. But we're seeing it, and this is not sunlight, 0 0.41. So in the sunlight, this tiny piece will produce half a volt, which is what the big pieces produce too. Wow. Mm -hmm. Then you wire these together, and you get up to whatever, 18 volts, whatever you need to charge mm -hmm. a battery. It just has to be like if it's a 12-volt battery, you'd want to have over 12 volts to push the electrons in. Mm -hmm. Then the size tells you how much current you're getting. So the bigger the cells, the more current, which produces your wattage. Mm -hmm. The smaller, the less current. But it doesn't matter how big your cells are. The voltage is always the same. Each cell is half a volt. You wire them in series. You get up to whatever voltage you want. Then just make big panels. And that's why the more cells I have and the larger they are, these are big cells, the more current I get. Mm -hmm. But even... Even this little string here, this is a 1.5 volt string because I've got one, two, three of them each at half a volt. Mm -hmm. So the thing I'm saying is that in the global campus, instead of bringing in photovoltaics and going, here, put this on your roof, bring in the cells, teach people how to put them together, and then even when they find broken panels, they know how they can take them apart and mm -hmm. use what useful pieces there are. You can always, like with this 1.5 volt thing, I can charge a single battery. Yeah. It just will take a long time because it's so small. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, is, is something that we have neglected to teach people. We've made solar into a commercial com commodity that you buy the panel. It's too expensive. Mm -hmm. When you buy these in bulk, they're only a dollar a watt mm -hmm. as opposed to three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten dollars mm -hmm. a watt when you buy a manufactured panel. And you can even get them cheaper because some places throw out the blemished ones that are not the right size. Like they're supposed to be this size, but if they're broken, they can't sell them, so they toss them out. Mm -hmm. And yet you can cut them up with a simple glass cutter mm -hmm. and make perfectly good panels out of them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's um, one of the, the hidden secrets of renewable energy when we talk about the cost of solar electricity. We should be empowering people to know that it's really simple soldering. I'm going to do it with a simple soldering iron and make, make your own panels. It can be plexiglass, it can be glass. You could put them on a backing of wood and not put any glass over them. They wouldn't last as long if the rain touched them, but you could certainly put them in a window. You could actually put them on the window. I mean, there's no, there's no reason why in a favela you couldn't take solar cells and put them in a window and just solder them together, mm. and they'd be safe. For but the mostly office. they have no windows. Ah, well, they have no windows, they have no windows. Um, or another thing people do now is they put them on a piece of, of, um, of scrap metal. Uh -huh. So there are people who will take a piece of scrap metal or wood, put the solar panel on it, and then paint it with urethane glazing, mm. or put silicone, just to keep the weather from getting onto mm. it and make their solar panel that's just painted to protect it from the weather. Mm. And it will work, just as long as it's a clear coating. So it is a, it's a pretty simple thing. I'm pretty excited. So, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful.